Hi everyone, Liz and Annie here again. Today we're making a video to try to help you combat what we hope will not be a systemic problem this coming quarter in our teaching, but maybe, and that is uh, getting your classroom disturbed by internet trolls. So probably a lot of us have seen news headlines floating around in the last couple of weeks of uh, people disrupting Zoom meetings. Uh, so getting a hold of your class meeting link or your personal meeting ID for your Zoom room and just kind of like coming in and being disruptive in a variety of different ways. So we want to be able to set up our Zoom meetings and our classes, obviously, so that we can lecture in peace, but also so that our students can learn and attend to the material in peace. So the way trolls have been crashing Zoom rooms is taking a lot of different formats. And so we're going to, Annie and I are going to walk through a variety of options that you have as the instructor and that your TAs have as co-hosts of your meeting to kind of lock everything down and make it as safe a learning environment as possible. Try to prevent uh, your meetings from getting crashed by trolls, but also like what to do if somebody like comes into your meeting unexpectedly and starts making some sort of ruckus. So uh, just to kind of like run through the formats that a troll can take, uh, you might have somebody who um, is charging into your room and making a lot of audio noise, right? So we talked about this in another video about like how to handle disruptive attendees in any kind of Zoom meeting, but you have some very basic tools available to you. So I'm gonna walk you through all the basic tools that'll get your room set up and allow you to manage it in real time if need be. And then I'm gonna turn it over to Annie who's gonna walk you through some of the more advanced options just in case you try all the basic stuff in the first week or two of the quarter, you still are having issues, you still can't, uh, manage or get your Zoom room locked down the way that you want it, and then you can kind of escalate it to um, a more, uh, let's say, like strict set of controls that you'll put in place over your classroom. So I'm going to show you all the easy stuff that we would recommend you try first that should be adequate, and if not, you can kind of go, you can escalate things, and Annie will walk you through how you're going to do that. Okay. So uh, first, I'm going to just walk you through some basics. So the way that it seems like trolls are disrupting people's classes are either by coming and making a lot of audio noise. So you guys already remember that we, in another video, talked about how one of your first uh, techniques is to just go in and mute everybody. So if you mute everybody, that shuts it down for the whole class. You can also turn people's video off. So I could turn Annie's video off if I wanted to. I could put Annie on hold if I knew that she was the person being disruptive, or I could, if I knew she was the troll, if I knew who it was, I would remove them from my class. I would remove them. They're not allowed to come back into the meeting. So it doesn't matter how they got the link to your room. doesn't matter how they figured out where your class was meeting or how they got in. Just kick them out. Then they're done. And then we would recommend once you start class, if you want to make sure your room is pretty secured, once you start class and it's like five minutes after the scheduled time or whatever, come in here and lock the meeting. So this means no one else can come join the meeting once it's locked. This is especially handy if you've kicked somebody out to make sure they don't like make another user account and come back in in a different way. Okay, so once you're started, you can lock it. You're recording everything. So if your students are late coming to class, they don't need to worry about it. They'll be able to see your stuff on iLearn later. Okay, so you can silence everybody with the mute all option. You can turn off individual people's video if you need to. You can also set in preferences that I'll show you in a second. Um, none of your participants are coming in with their microphones on or their video on, so everyone's coming in, but they're not making noise or sound. And then the other way that we've heard that people are being disruptive or trolls are disrupting classes is to come into the chat function. So the chat bar, you know, obviously there'd be a lot more people if it were not just me and Annie in here. Chat has a lot of functionality and we, we hope to be able to use this for our classes because the students will be able to be watching you lecture, chat to their TA, or ask the instructor questions when there's something that they want to have clarified at a break. So it's nice to have the chat window if possible, but we may want to lock it down a little bit. So, uh, there's only two people in this meeting, but I could send a message to everybody. So if I had a bunch of students, I could send it to my whole class or I could send it privately just to Annie. But over here, this three dot button is what you wanna click on. This will lock your chat down a little bit more for your whole class. So now participants, I can set what they can do in terms of their chat options. So I can make it, right now I have it set to host only. So Annie's only option for chatting is to talk to me because I'm the host of this meeting. So what we would say you don't wanna do 
is have it said to everyone publicly. So that means if some troll crashes your class, they're going to be able to like broadcast whatever troll nonsense they want into the chat to the entire class. You don't want that publicly or privately. So don't don't enable these everyone options. Consider no one if you really want to lock your room down or consider host only if uh, it's okay with you if students and potential trolls are messaging you and your TAs, but not all of your undergraduate students or students who are participating in your class. So I would recommend that. For now, I'm going to leave it to host only. And Annie, would you, well, I guess we can't test it with only two people, but uh, when you try to chat, does it give you any kind of like, you can only talk to me? Yeah, so normally there's a drop down menu um, where it says two, like two colon, and then I can drop down and pick either everybody or you privately as the host or whoever the hosts are. But right now there's no button. It's only Liz Davis privately. Okay. So I have no choice. Okay, awesome. So that's locking it down. Does it mean trolls can still put disruptive, offensive content into the chat? But this is a way to protect your class from having to see it. So not uh, not optimal. Like we don't want TAs to have to see it either or you to have to see it either. But it at least will protect your students a little bit. The other way that we know trolls are being disruptive is to come into classes where they're not supposed to be there and start sharing their screen. So I'm going to show you in the preferences how to make sure that you don't enable screen sharing for anybody who happens to come into your room, but you kind of keep that as a tool that only the instructor or the you and the TAs, the host and the co-host will have to actually share material. So um, these should be adequate to kind of keep things in line, but let me show you how to do this in your Zoom preferences window. So most of these things that are going to be relevant are going to be found, I'm going to move us over here so you can still see our video while well, I'm showing you these things. Most of these are going to be in the web page version of Zoom. So you could look also through the chat settings and this, uh, the sharing screen options in your Zoom preferences within your app, but most things that you're going to want to be able to do are in your web page under settings. So there's tons of settings on here. I'm not going to walk through all of them, but just a lot of them are relevant to locking down your room and protecting it from trolls. Host video, you want your video on when you're hosting a meeting. So you want that on participants video. You can turn this off. So that way people can come into your room without their video on. They can turn it on if they like, especially if they're students and they're supposed to be there. But by default, they're coming in with it off. Um, okay, these are some options that you might wanna tweak, but Annie will walk you through the pros and cons of these. These are a little more advanced to kind of lock down your room. I wanna use my personal meeting ID for my classes, for my office hours, for anything that students need to access me in Zoom. So I wanna always be using my Zoom room that ends in uh, slash Liz Davis, instead of scheduling a completely unique meeting every time I'm opening Zoom and inviting my class uh, to come to a lecture. So there are pros and cons to using your personal meeting ID. We'll get to that in a minute. Annie, I'll get to that in a minute. And there's password options. Again, Annie's gonna cover that too. Uh, here's another one that's good to turn on. Mute participants upon entry. So this would make it so that my entire class, as people come into my room, have their audio muted as default. So they can go in and undo it, and I can control whether they're allowed to do that or not. Uh, but they start the meeting muted. So they have to come in quietly. So people aren't coming in like inadvertently shouting or being disruptive if they come in a little bit late if you don't have that meeting locked. Other stuff, okay, chat settings are really important. So if you really got frustrated and you had a recurring problem with people coming in and bothering your class, you could just disable chat altogether. So you could come here, uh, set this to be off. You wouldn't have chat functionality anymore. Now, we don't necessarily recommend that because you want your students to be able to let you know when they have a question and to communicate the question to your TA so you can uh, easily and efficiently collate the questions and run through them in your breaks between lecture videos. So this would be like last ditch kind of effort to like turn off chat and make it so nobody can come in and do it. Um, private chat, you, you can mess with all this. I auto save the chat. So especially if I were going to have any problems with someone disrupting my class in the chat, I would want a transcript of everything that happened in there in case I needed it for documentation purposes. Uh, you can turn off private chat. So you can make it so your students can't talk to each other. They basically can only use chat, like we were just talking about, to talk to me or to my TAs. That's the only thing that can happen. They can't communicate with one another in that chat window. Obviously, if they know each other outside of class, they can chat all kinds of other ways, but at least in the class environment, they're not talking to each other. Uh, this is another important one. Turn file transfer off. This will stop people from being able to like paste links to offensive content into your chat. 
So this like shuts that down. There's probably no reason that you or your TAs are gonna need to send files to your students through Zoom chat. You can do that through iLearn for anything that's actually relevant to your course. So turn that off, make sure this is grayed out. Uh, co-host, this is really important. Make your TAs co-hosts of your meetings so they have power to kind of go do crowd management while you're lecturing. Uh, this is always set for us. So like with our institutional account, the host can always put attendees on hold. You can't uncheck this, that means if someone's being disruptive, you can put them in timeout, like a purgatory room for a couple of minutes. You can let them come back. If it is a student enrolled in your class and there was some kind of miscommunication, but they are uh, appropriate to be in your classroom and you want them to come back. And again, you have that second option of removing people entirely from your Zoom room, which will kick them out of your class. Okay, screen sharing. This is the other thing that you want to lock down. So right now I have this set up in a way that I wouldn't want to keep for a class. I don't want all participants to be able to share. I want only me to be able to share. And who can start sharing when someone else is already sharing? Uh, I, can't, I don't have an option here because now I'm the only one, the host is the only one who can share. So I would recommend this. Don't make it possible for other people in your class to commandeer your screen and what's being shown to all like 100 or 200 or 600 of your students, make it so that you, the instructor, or the TAs are the only people who can do this. Okay, so I'm gonna save that. I think this is it, okay? I could allow remove people to rejoin. I'm not gonna do that. If I'm removing someone from my class, it's because we've had a real issue and they need to come back on another day or they need to have a discussion with me offline or in office hours if they're a student in my class. But I'm not going to enable that. So if I kick somebody out, they're out. And I'm going to lock my meeting so that they cannot come back in. Okay. I'm just checking to make sure there's nothing else in here that you would necessarily need to do for these basic options. But just to run through it before I turn it over to Annie, you can mute everybody. You can stop people's video. You can make it so that no one but you can share their screen. You can lock down your chat functionality so that students can only talk to you or the TAs or just you or to no one. You can turn chat off entirely if it continues to be a problem. You can boot people out of your room and you can lock your meeting once your class has started and that will stop people from coming in in the middle and being disruptive. Okay, and everything else is a little more sophisticated. So I think, did I miss anything with the basics, Annie, or is that? I okay. uh, don't think so, sounds okay. good. All right, I'm gonna Do you wanna talk about the other stuff now or should we do that in a separate thing, do you think? In a separate one. Okay. But otherwise, it won't screen. Report. Yeah. What? Whatever. Yeah. I'll no, just do it no. on mine. Okay. So, anyway, uh, this video was to cover all the basics of like hopefully the easy, kind of low hanging fruit for what you're going to do to lock your class down and make sure it's protected from internet trolls for the coming uh, spring quarter of teaching. Annie's going to make another video. We're going to make another video in a minute where she explains the more advanced features in case these basics do not do it for you and you still have problems with people coming in who are not supposed to be there and messing up your class. Okay, so this should get you started, but we're gonna make another thing in just a second to explain the advanced options that everybody has. Good luck with all this and we'll see you in just a minute.